<laughs> it says, uh, when a dilute gas expands quasi-statically from um, some initial volume to final volume, uh, let me see here, some initial volume to, I like to just label it as a matter of practice. It's possible that I don't need it, but let me label it as a matter of good habit. Some, from some initial volume to final volume, it does uh, some amount of work. Uh, the gas remains at a constant temperature of, um, I guess, some T throughout this process. And as you are reading through this, if you are feeling like you haven't been given complete set of information, you would be right. Um, so you haven't been given pressure. You haven't been given if it's a monatomic or a diatomic. And, um, and I guess those are kind of the main pieces of information that's missing. So what I'm hoping is that whatever question is being asked, um, that is answerable <laughs> with the information that have been given. So, so let's kind of move on with the parts A and B, hoping that those, uh, on those incomplete pieces of information are not necessary. So the part A asks, the net change in internal energy of the gases that makes me worry because I'm remembering the formula that internal energy is given by degree of freedom over two and kBT. So I don't know if it's monatomic or diatomic. So the first thing you might worry is that you weren't not given the information, but hopefully as you read it carefully, you know that it's looking for the net, it's looking for net change. So what you really need is for change of energy, you need a change of temperature. And it says the gas remains at constant, te constant temperature of this value. So the change in temperature is zero. So whatever this coefficient is, doesn't matter. It's a zero joule. So good, <laughs> all good so far. The information that the problem didn't give us doesn't hurt our ability to answer the question. Now, the second part asks, the net heat transfer to the gas in this process is, and I think this is something useful for you to kind of know as a matter of rule of thumb, that whenever something asks about the heat as a kind of a default mindset, um, heat is something that's not calculated directly. I mean, the question might give you what the amount of heat transfer is kind of as a matter of part of the information that they give to you. That's one possibility. In the cases where they didn't give you the heat transfer, you know, Q, the symbols that we normally use, if they didn't give you the amount of heat transfer and, and they are asking for it, Usually there is no formula from which you would directly calculate the heat. The closest thing you have to a formula is the first law of thermodynamics. And the first law says that the change in internal energy is equal to the net heat transfer, positive means heat transfer into the system, minus the work done by the system. Positive means the system is doing work on the surrounding. That's why this minus sign here um, transfers energy out of the system. This is the thing that comes closest to there being a formula for the heat transfer. And the process you go through it is you find how much change in internal energy there is. You find how much work has been done. Then from that, you can actually solve for Q the heat transfer into the system is equal to change of internal energy plus any work done by the system. So here, um, oh, I already know the change in internal energy. That was the first question there. And the question actually gave me uh, work done kind of directly. So 
that's my answer here. The amount of heat transfer here is equal to the work done because change of ener internal energy is zero. So the net heat transfer must be 290 joules. Yeah. So uh, this is, a, I mean, it's presented as a quantitative question, but what it really is is a, a, a conceptual question because once you got the concepts right, then uh, mathematically it's very simple to answer. 